the book was written for two reasons, really. One was I had put a lot of effort into my various speeches and uh, they were uh, very carefully thought through. Uh, but of course what gets lost, because often you cannot talk about it directly in your speech, is what is the context. And I was struck from, from the very beginning that the issue of the freedoms of the university, the freedoms of faculty, students, and in particular the university as an institution, its autonomy, uh, were important subjects and I obviously had uh, taken them right on in my inaugural address. Stanford's first president, David Starr Jordan, chose Die Luft der Freiheit weht, The Wind of Freedom Blows, as the informal motto. What I read impressed on me what a splendid choice Jordan and Stanford made when they invoked the winds of freedom as the short expression of principle to guide Stanford University. The Stanford motto is something very important. It has a very interesting history that I could not lay out in detail in the inaugural speech. But that then led me to address concerns of mine uh, that uh, I had had uh, since my Chicago days. For instance, I kind of had begun to notice that certain subjects in the classroom were so explosive Uh, that uh, both faculty and students engaged in self-censorship. Let us say in a liberal setting, uh, the Supreme Court's decision on abortion, uh, Roe v. Wade, could not really any longer often be discussed in uh, its, its own context and, and the questionable aspects of the discussion because so many people felt so strongly about it in the classroom. And uh, I wanted to emphasize that that was really improper, inappropriate for a university. You had to have a wide open discussion of all aspects of human phenomena. A university's freedom must be the freedom of its members faculty and students, to think and speak for themselves. A university must not have dominant ways of thinking. I'm very always concerned about the fragility of universities. Part of that clearly reflects my own background, my German background, because when Hitler came to power in 1933, he almost uh, immediately uh, forced the universities to comply with the ideology of the Nazis. Politicians and strong social forces uh, in society try to leverage universities for their purposes. It is not so much um, uh, trying to influence the content of universities Uh, or forcing them to think particular ways as you had in, uh, in the Third Reich, for instance. But it is uh, the fact uh, that government nevertheless, for all kinds of well-meaning reasons, believes it should regulate. And I think what is happening now, the world over to universities, uh, by no means in the United States alone, Uh, that everybody looks to universities as the institutions that will save their societies. By that I mean save their societies economically. People look at Stanford and, and Silicon Valley and innovation and entrepreneurship and they say that's what we believe the University of Munich should be doing, right? The question is how we do it. And I, I'm concerned that increasingly as everybody is throwing money at us for this purpose or that purpose, we get entangled. I believe uh, universities have autonomy, we have academic freedom, we should make our decisions based only on academic considerations, and we have that for a reason, and that is uh, to make sure that the academic enterprise is uninhibited and robust. <laughs>